All right, so if you're not a card player, sometimes probability problems get a little bit more difficult. You are picking cards out of a deck without replacement. You have 52 cards in a standard deck. You have what are called four suits, usually hearts, diamonds, clubs, spades, right? Yep. Two of the suits are red, two of the suits are black, um, four suits. Each one has 13 cards per suit, right? Stuff like that. So if, if you're doing probability problems and we get to the test and you have issues with not understanding how to play cards, those are questions that I can help you answer, but as far as, um, but you should try to learn some of that stuff. So if you're picking the cards out of a deck without replacement, so that means you're, you're decreasing the amount of cards left in the pile, you're hoping to get all four fives. What is the probability that you get all four fives? So first of all, we have to know how many, if it's probability, right? We should know how many different possible cards are. I guess it doesn't matter. How many fives are in the deck? Four. Four. So on that very first pick, what's my probability of getting a getting a five? Four out of forty-eight. Four out of 52. I have a 4 and 52 chance of getting a 5 right now. What's next? So if I did get a 5, what's the probability that I get a 5 on the next draw? 3 out of 51. 3, because I have one less 5 in the deck, but I also have one less card in the pile. What's next? 2 out of 50, and then a 1 out of 49. So you'd want to multiply these things together. I'll do the top, 4 times 3 times 2. What's that bottom number, please? Six million? Sixty-four million. Six million, four hundred ninety-seven thousand, four hundred. Okay. Uh, that decimal is going to be really small, so I would leave it as the reduced fraction. That's not quite reduced. I don't know. Give me the decimal for it. We better take a look because that's giving, I'm sure it's giving you scientific notation. 24 divided by 6 million. 497. 497. 497. 400. Okay. So remember this e to the negative 6 is asking you to bring the decimal six places to the left. So I'm going to bring it once to the left, it'll be on the other side of the three. And we have to add five zeros. Point one, two, three, four, five, three, six, nine would round up to three, seven. So, I mean, that's a tiny chance of that happening. Basically improbable. You can almost say that would never happen. It could. There's a chance that it could. But that's the, the, if you literally did this every day of your life, it probably would, would never happen that you could pick out, the, you know, the four aces out of a pile and just four draws. So. All right. Now we get into some tree diagrams. 
The spitting llamas are playing the turkey vultures for the state title. The score is tied with 10.8 seconds left in the game. A vulture player fouls the star player, Dama Glama. We used, we used to have a teacher in our department. He's no longer here, but he was he, he liked goats on the pro, on tests and llamas. For the season, Glama has made 70% of his free throws. If Glama makes one or both of the two free throws, the spitting llamas will win the championship. It's a tie ball game. If he makes one or both, they win. Make a tree diagram to help you decide the probability that the split, uh, spitting llamas will win the game. So here's what happens, right? What are your two choices when he shoots the ball? He makes it or he misses it. So the first one, I typically will do them, you know, the same all the time. So I'm going to put point seven on top and point three on the bottom. What does point seven represent? Him making it. That he makes it. The point three represents he misses, he it. misses it. So, uh, you know, he makes it. He misses it down there. Now, take away the pressure or whatever. After he shoots the first one, does that really have any effect on him getting ready to shoot the next one? You know, they don't, they don't come out, you know, and if you miss, they don't make the rim smaller or bigger. It's the same. Everything's the same. They don't move you closer. They don't move you further back. Everything's the same. So then the second part of this diagram does the same thing. He has a 0.7 chance of making it a 0.3 chance of missing. Or down here is a 0.7 or a 0.3. So this is why they call it a tree diagram. Things just keep branching off. Now, what's the probability that he makes both shots? That's to follow the pathway right here, right along that path. He made both shots. Well, what you do is you'll take 0.7 times 0.7, and what do you get? 1. 0.49. So this particular star player makes 70% of his shots. Probability says that when he shoots two shots like this, 50% of the time, he'll make both. Okay. The next tree, or the next branch, if you will, is right here. You would call this a make, then a miss. So what do we do? We take our 0.7 times 0.3, you get 0.21. Then you take the next branch, which would be miss, then make. So that one's 0 0.3 times 0.7, which is also 0.21. So notice those two branches in the middle are basically the same. Make, miss is the same as miss, make, right? I mean, and then the last one, what's the probability that he misses both shots? So that's 0 0.3 times 0.3, which is 0 0.09. Now, if you add up all of the red numbers at the end, what do they add up to? Equals 1 equals 1. 100% one, of your event will be contained in the red numbers. So you multiply. Whenever you go along branches, you multiply them. Well, what is the probability that they win the game? There are two ways for you to calculate this. What is it? One way. Josh, what did you say? Does he have to make both? No, he has to you only have to make one of them, right? Yeah. 0.91. Yep. So you, add so you can do this, this path, this path, or this path, right? So you just add all of them. So you add those up. So you can go 0.49 plus 0.21 plus 0.21 and... 
So there's 0.91% chance. Or what else can we do? What does that pathway tell you? That one would tell us they're going to lose, right? So there's a 0.09% chance that they're going to lose. So we can do the complement, which is 1 minus 0 0.09. And that also gives us 0.91. So there's a 9% chance they're going to lose. So the complement, 0.91 that they're going to win. All right. Workplace accidents are categorized into three groups, minor accidents, moderate accidents, and severe accidents. The probability that a given accident is moderate is 0.4, and that it is severe is 0.1. The rest are considered minor. Two accidents occur independently in one month. Create a tree diagram showing various outcomes of these workplace accidents. Um, Uh, whatever. So let's just put, let's always put minor on top, moderate in the middle, and severe on the bottom. So whenever you make your tree diagrams, your branches should always be the same. Every time you split, you know, you should put yeses on top, noes on the bottom. Minor, moderate, severe on the branches. Do it the same way every time. So they tell us that the accent is moderate is 0.4. Probability is severe is 0.1. So what's the number that goes on the minor branch? 0.5. So now when you follow the branches, you can go 0.5, 0.4, 0.1, 0.5, 0.4, 0.1, 0.5, 0.4, 0.1, 0.5, 0.4, 0.1, 0.5, 0.4, 0.1, 0.5, 0.4, 0.1, 0.5, 0.4, 
And the last one is 0. 0.4 times 0. 0.5. It's also 0. So you want to add those two no, uh, those three numbers up. 0. 0.2, 0. 0.2, and 0. 0.25 looks like 0. 0.65. So there's about a 65% chance that this would happen. 